Primordial Black Holes Primordial black holes are believed to have formed in the first instant after the Big Bang, when the universe was less than a second old. At that time, there were no stars, no galaxies, just a hot, chaotic soup of particles and energy. Within this turbulence, certain regions were slightly denser than their surroundings. If a pocket of matter was compressed beyond a critical threshold, gravity could force it to collapse directly into a black hole. These black holes could be astonishingly small, smaller than an atom, but still hold the mass of a mountain. To visualize that, imagine compressing every skyscraper in Manhattan into something the size of a grain of sand. The resulting object would be completely invisible to the eye, yet contain an overwhelming gravitational pull. Their event horizons the point where escape becomes physically impossible might measure less than a fraction of a millimeter across. Despite their tiny size, these black holes would be incredibly dense and gravitationally powerful. What makes them disturbing is their silence. They do not emit light, sound, or radiation. If one passed through your body, or even through Earth, it wouldn't tear things apart. It would tunnel straight through every layer of matter, as if atoms were just mist, leaving no evidence it had ever been there. Because of their invisibility and gravitational effects, scientists have proposed that primordial black holes might explain dark matter, the mysterious, unseen mass that shapes galaxies and keeps them from flying apart. Some models suggest billions of these invisible relics could be drifting through the universe right now. In 2019, one theory proposed that a tennis ball-sized primordial black hole, weighing as much as a planet, might exist in the far reaches of our solar system. Its gravity alone could explain the strange orbits of distant trans-Neptunian objects without the need for a ninth planet. These black holes, if they exist, wouldn't be remnants of stars. They would be fossils of the universe's formation structures born from raw gravitational pressure before light itself had fully spread. Stellar Mass Black Holes Stellar mass black holes form from the death of massive stars, those at least 20 times heavier than our Sunday. These stars live fast, burning through their nuclear fuel at extreme rates. Once they exhaust that fuel, there's nothing left to support the immense weight of their own mass. Gravity takes over completely, triggering a catastrophic collapse. In this moment, the core of the star implodes, and the outer layers explode outward in a supernova one of the most violent events in the universe. What's left behind is a core so dense that not even light can escape it. A black hole. These black holes typically range from three to a few dozen solar masses, with all that mass compressed into a region smaller than a major city. Imagine squeezing the entire mass of Earth into a sphere only the size of a marble, or fitting a dozen suns into the volume of downtown Manhattan. The resulting gravitational field is so extreme it warps the space and time around it. From a distance, the black hole is invisible, but nearby, it acts like a cosmic predator. In binary systems, where a black hole orbits a living star, its gravity can siphon gas from its partner. This stolen material spirals inward, accelerating and heating to millions of degrees. Just before being consumed, it releases a burst of X-rays so intense that we can detect it from across the galaxy. One of the first such systems ever discovered Cygnus X1 revealed its black hole by this glowing, spiraling gas. Stellar mass black holes also reveal themselves through gravitational waves, ripples in space-time caused by violent mergers. When two black holes collide, the resulting energy release can briefly outshine the entire observable universe in gravitational radiation. What makes these black holes terrifying is their frequency. They are everywhere, scattered across galaxies, left behind by dying giants. Statistically, while you've been listening to this explanation, several new stellar black holes have likely formed somewhere in the universe. Intermediate mass black holes. Intermediate mass black holes are the missing link between stellar mass and supermassive black holes. They span a mass range from a few hundred to several hundred thousand times the mass of our sun, too massive to result from a single star's collapse, yet too small to anchor a galaxy they occupy a strange and largely unexplored middle ground. Unlike stellar mass black holes, which we can detect through X-ray emissions or gravitational waves, intermediate mass black holes remain elusive. They don't glow. They rarely feed. Most of the time, they drift in silence. For decades, astronomers searched and found nothing concrete. Only recently have we started to detect possible candidates. One method involves studying dense star clusters where collisions are more likely. 
In these environments, black holes could slowly grow by merging with other black holes or swallowing massive stars. Over time, this could lead to the formation of a mid-sized black hole quietly snowballing in the darkness. A breakthrough came in 2009, when X-ray observations from a distant galaxy revealed HLX1, a source too massive and bright to be explained by a typical stellar mass black hole. Then in 2020, gravitational wave detectors picked up the aftermath of two black holes merging. The resulting object weighed around 142 solar masses, a mass too large for a single stellar collapse, placing it firmly in intermediate territory. To grasp their scale, if a stellar, mass black hole is like a single skyscraper packed with mass, then an intermediate black hole is like an entire city compressed into a small neighborhood, still invisible, still silent, but with enough gravity to influence star clusters or distort light from background galaxies. The fear they invoke lies in their quiet scale. They're massive enough to warp entire regions of space, yet small enough to remain hidden lurking between stars, invisible to nearly all our instruments. Unlike supermassive black holes, they don't dominate a galaxy. They simply wait in the dark, undetected. Supermassive black holes. Supermassive black holes are the gravitational anchors of galaxies. Found at the heart of nearly every large galaxy, including our own Milky Way, they possess masses ranging from millions to tens of billions of times that of the Sunday. These are not collapsed stars. Their origin remains uncertain. Some theories suggest they formed early in the universe from the direct collapse of enormous gas clouds. Others propose that smaller black holes merged over time, gradually accumulating mass. The black hole at the center of the Milky Way Sagittarius A star is about 4 million times the mass of the Sunday, yet it occupies a space smaller than Mercury's orbit. We know it's there because of how stars near the center of the galaxy whip around an apparently empty spot at immense speeds. One of those stars completes an orbit in just 12 years, traveling at 8% the speed of light. No object besides a black hole could generate that kind of gravitational pull in such a small region. These black holes can become even more extreme. TON 618, one of the largest known, weighs an estimated 66 billion solar masses. If you placed our entire solar system next to it, the planets, moons, and sun would vanish inside its event horizon like a pebble disappearing into the ocean. Their reach extends far beyond their event horizon. When they feed, gas and dust spiral in at near-light speeds, forming accretion disks that blaze with radiation. The heat can reach hundreds of millions of degrees, emitting X-rays, ultraviolet light, and radio waves that we can detect from across the cosmos. When this activity reaches peak intensity, the black hole becomes what's known as a quasar, the brightest type of object in the universe. Some quasars shine so brightly, they outshine every star in their host galaxy combined. Supermassive black holes aren't just cosmic sinkholes. They shape galaxies themselves. Their jets, narrow beams of particles moving near the speed of light can travel millions of light years into space, regulating star formation in entire galactic clusters. They influence how galaxies evolve, where stars are born, and what structures survive. In everyday terms, imagine a structure so powerful that it dictates the shape and behavior of an entire city, not by moving through it, but simply by sitting silently at its center. That's what a supermassive black hole does to a galaxy without ever being seen directly. Quasars Quasars are not a separate type of black hole, but rather a specific phase in the life of a supermassive black hole, one where it is actively feeding. When vast amounts of gas, dust, or even stars fall into the accretion disk around a supermassive black hole, the material heats up from friction and gravitational compression to millions of degrees. The result is a blindingly bright disk of light and energy that can be seen across billions of light years. At their peak, quasars can outshine the entire galaxy that hosts them. Their radiation spans the electromagnetic spectrum, from radio waves to visible light, ultraviolet, X-rays, and gamma rays. In fact, many of the earliest quasars discovered look like bright stars, which is how they earned the name quasi-stellar objects. Only later did astronomers realize they were the hyperactive hearts of distant galaxies. In physical terms, the energy output is staggering. A single quasar can emit more energy in one second than our sun will in its entire 10 billion year lifetime. And yet, the source of that energy a black hole remains invisible. 
what we see is the death spiral of everything caught in its gravitational grip. To humanize the scale, if Earth were placed anywhere near a quasar, even at a distance of several light years, the radiation would fry the planet instantly. A quasar is like a cosmic blowtorch powered by gravity alone. Not all supermassive black holes become quasars. It depends on how much material is available to fall in. The black hole at the center of the Milky Way is currently quiet, but if enough matter were to fall into it, Sagittarius A could ignite and light up the sky casting shadows on Earth even at night. Quasars also act as beacons to the early universe. Because their light travels such vast distances, observing them allows scientists to study the conditions of the cosmos when it was still young just a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. Micro Black Holes Micro black holes are theoretical objects, possibly smaller than a proton but still containing immense mass. Unlike other black holes formed from stellar collapse, these would be born from pure energy compressed into an unimaginably small space. According to some models, micro black holes could have formed during high energy conditions in the early universe or might even be created today in rare, extreme environments like particle collisions. One proposed mechanism involves high-energy particle accelerators such as the Large Hadron Collider (LHC). When particles smash together at near light speed, the energy density at the collision point becomes extreme. Some physicists have theorized that under such conditions, gravity could become strong enough to briefly form a black hole the size of a subatomic particle. To scale this for human understanding, if you could compress all the energy produced by a modern nuclear power plant over an entire year into a space smaller than an electron, the gravitational pressure could form a micro black hole, but such a black hole would evaporate almost instantly. This evaporation is predicted by Hawking radiation, a quantum mechanical process through which black holes lose mass and energy over time. While stellar black holes might take longer than the age of the universe to vanish, micro black holes would disappear in a fraction of a second. They would emit a tiny flash of energy and be gone before any human brain could process what happened. Despite the doomsday headlines, when the LHC was first activated, there is no danger of micro black holes consuming Earth. If created at all, they would be short-lived, harmless, and almost impossible to detect. Still, the concept is deeply unsettling. These objects, if real, could be constantly forming and vanishing in energetic cosmic events, or could exist in dimensions beyond our perception. In theories like string theory, gravity might leak into hidden dimensions, increasing its strength at very small scales. This could allow micro black holes to form more easily than we currently expect, potentially offering a glimpse into the structure of reality itself. Exotic Black Holes Exotic black holes are theoretical constructs that extend beyond the standard categories. They are solutions to Einstein's equations of general relativity that are mathematically consistent, even if they haven't yet been observed in nature. These include rotating black holes, charged black holes, wormholes, white holes, and more speculative configurations. A rotating black hole, or Kerr black hole, doesn't just pull matter inward, it drags space-time itself around with it. This creates a region outside the event horizon called the ergosphere, where space is being twisted so violently that even objects not yet inside the black hole are affected. Within the ergosphere, it is theoretically possible to extract energy from the black hole's spin using a method called the Penrose process. In this process, an object could drop in, split in two, and one half escape with more energy than it entered, with essentially turning the black hole into a massive gravitational battery. There are also charged black holes, known as Reissner-Nordstrom black holes. These have both mass and electric charge. The result is a more complex structure, with multiple horizons, layers of no return, potentially separated by finite space. In theory, objects could bounce between these layers under very specific conditions. While it's unclear if nature allows charged black holes to form and remain stable, they are mathematically possible. Then there are wormholes, shortcuts through space-time. Some solutions to Einstein's equations suggest that black holes could act as bridges to distant parts of the universe, or even to other universes entirely. These would require exotic forms of matter with negative energy density to remain stable, which have not been observed. But if they do exist, a wormhole could theoretically allow faster-than-light travel without violating the rules of relativity. Even stranger are white holes. 
the hypothetical opposites of black holes. Instead of absorbing everything, a white hole would eject matter and never allow anything to enter. Some models propose that white holes could be the end phase of an evaporating black hole, or that they're connected to black holes in a larger quantum system. There's no evidence yet that white holes exist, but their possibility hints at unknown structures embedded deep in the laws of physics. What makes exotic black holes so disturbing is that they're not ruled out by physics, they're ruled out by lack of observation. They challenge our assumptions about time, causality, and what's possible. If even one of them is proven to exist, it would force a major revision in how we understand the universe. If you always thought space is scary, then you need to look this breakdown of the scariest places in the universe.